Hey there, I'm Stan from Discovery Campus and welcome to our series on unboxing and technical reviews. If you're in the market for a new drone or looking at upgrading an existing drone, we are about to take a look at the DJI Mavic Air. Um, it's a 4K drone. It's priced at about $1,000 Canadian or 800 US. Um, it's a bit cheaper than the Mavic Pro, believe it or not, which was uh, 1300 Canadian or about 1000 US. So what we did is we unboxed it, we took it for a flight, and here's our review of it. Come check it out. All right, so let's take a look uh, what we got inside the box here. Here's a quick peek. Nice little gray case. It feels like it's got something inside of it. Another nice little gray case with something inside it. And what looks like an accessories box. Ah, all the goodies are here. That's a quick look inside. This is an accessories box. We'll take a peek inside in a second. What else do we have here? It looks like a controller. Let's see if I can get that guy out. Ah, there's the Mavic Air controller. So we'll flip the right way around for you. What else is inside of here? There's a nice padded flip sleeve. And that's where we get the batteries. These little guys, extra battery, charger charging plug and this looks like the actual charger dock for the batteries themselves. So that's what's inside of the accessories kit. Let's see what's inside of here. Uh, this is where we've got some goodies. These are your USB cables. They'll be used from your phone over to uh, the controller. This looks like a charging cable or at least a data upgrade, a firmware upgrade cable. And you've got some propellers. So they've got a bunch of propellers here. It looks like maybe a spare set as well. And there are some other items inside this little bag. I'll pull them out in a second. These are the uh, control knobs that go on top of your controller so that you have some sticks to play with. That's what they look like. Okay, so that's all the pieces so far. This is really light, by the way. It actually feels kind of empty. Manuals. Some propeller guards. These will come in handy when you're learning to fly. That's all that's inside this box. That leaves one more piece, this. This has got a bit of weight to it. Not too heavy, though. And there it is. That is the Mavic Air drone super tiny this is the galaxy note 8 phone and that's the mavic air so it is pretty much the same size as my phone in terms of height so what does it do it folds out that's the amazing thing about this one so there it is what we're gonna do is pull out the back legs first there they are slipping down then these little guys pop right out sideways and that's the unit. A lot of warning stickers all over the place on here. The battery is actually on the bottom as opposed to the Mavic Pro, which had the battery on the top. Um, it's also got these little extra feet that flip out. I think. So you got a little bit of height. Cool, so those are all the pieces of the Mavic Air Fly More Combo. Um, we're gonna charge it up and take it for a flight. I'll catch you on the other side. Just back from flying the Mavic Air outside. Uh, we just want to talk about the flight and our experience with it. The first thing we want to talk about is when you uh, get the Mavic Air, do perform the firmware update before you go and fly it. If you don't do that, you're going to be presented with a bunch of dialog boxes all over your phone telling you to update, things are out of date. So it's not a very good experience. We have to come back in and then actually do the updates. You're going to need a couple of apps to do the updates. Um, the first is the DJI Go application for your phone. Um, that will allow you to do firmware updates from there. There's also DJI Assist, uh, and that's for your Mac or your PC. So you can do uh, updates through there. Now, firmware updates, there's an update for the unit itself, and there's an update for the controller. Um, but with the Mavic Pro, there used to be a firmware update for the batteries, but I haven't been able to see that uh, in any of the literature so far. 
our experience with flying it was um, was pretty good overall. What we did notice is that the unit is a lot lighter, uh, a lot smaller than the Mavic Pro, so it buffets quite a bit. It does jostle around in the wind, and that can result in um, you retaking shots quite a few times. So try not to fly it on a windy day, basically. The next thing we want to talk about is the gimbal. So the gimbal protector on the unit here is just at the front and it wraps to the underneath. It's a far better design than the Mavic Pro was. The Mavic Pro had a piece of plastic. It was very fiddly to, to work with. This one's quite simple. All you do is line up the grooves, push it back in and close the door. So it's pretty quick to pack up. Uh, it's also pretty quick to get going as well. One very important thing that you have to take note of with the Mavic Air that you didn't have to with the Pro is when you do unfold the feet, so it's rear first and the front folds out, make sure you put down this little extra foot. If you don't do that and you place the, Map, the Mavic Air down on the surface, you can break or injure the, the gimbal area. It's not protected at all. It requires this foot to give a distance off of the ground. So from a design perspective, that probably could have been a bit better. While we're talking about the legs here, when you're folding them back up, it is far easier to fold in the front and then roll in the rear. If you don't do it in this particular way, what will happen is the propeller will get stuck behind the rubber leg and it'll stick out. When you put it in your bag, you can probably break a propeller. Perform that process, which is the fold in and then roll in when you're putting it away. And that'll keep the little rubber bumper behind the propeller. So the camera on this unit is a lot better than the Mavic Pro. It's a 100 megabit um, bit rate, so you're getting much more information as, as you're recording, but the camera quality seems to be quite improved as well. It's a clearer image out of the box. It's vibrant, it's got good color, not excessive. That's pretty much it for the unit itself. Um, I wanna move on to the controller and some of the things we experienced with the controller. So the first thing you'll notice with the, this controller is that it has no display. The Mavic Pro had a display on it. You don't need that display, so I'm glad they got rid of it. Um, again, it is a USB charging device, so you plug it in here to charge. And while I've got this handy, if you do go out and fly and you do bring extra batteries with you, one of the pieces that comes in the kit is this little uh, battery to USB converter. It's really handy out in the field. It lets you uh, convert this battery into a USB charger for all kinds of devices. Simply put this onto the battery uh, pins and then you've got a USB port to charge anything you like. It's very good and handy for charging the controller if you've got low batteries on the controller or on your mobile device or your screen if you need to charge that as well. But where this controller um, does have some issues is in the holding of your device. So once you fold these out, your controlling uh, mobile device would typically go into the little uh, holders here on the side. Well, what we found is that if you have any kind of skin whatsoever, and this is a really thin skin on uh, a Galaxy Note 8, there's no way you're gonna get that in there. You have to de-skin your phone to get it inside of the controllers. You didn't have to do that with the Mavic Pro. So we have another one that we use on another device and we've taken the skin off of it and it fits in fairly good. It's a pretty snug fit, but um, just letting you know you're gonna have to take that off. The other uh, disadvantage that we found was that they decided to store some extra button knobs for you, which is nice of them to give you in case you lose these. But when you place your phone in there, it doesn't allow it to go up to the top, which prevents you from plugging in your USB or your lightning connector. And that's kind of a annoying and finicky, especially in our case, it was quite cold outside and we just wanted to get this thing going. Um, so just be aware of that. You can take these out, which is in fact what we had to do. All right, we just want to take a look at some of the footage that we captured um, so you can see what that looks like ungraded uh, and we'll move into that right now. So here's the drone just taking off. Um, that's it in midair. Here we're going up above this building. So right off the bat, you can see there's, there's quite a bit of clarity um, in the image. So we're doing a quick pan there. Um, 
I'm watching for a lot of wires. I was looking overhead, keeping sight of the drone as it goes up. As we're going up this building, you get a, an idea of the color capture as well as the acceleration that was as fast as it can go upward. Here we are just above that building doing a quick pan of the area. You'll see BMO Field here in Toronto, um, also out into the lake. Uh, quite a bit of detail around the shoreline and on some of the tops of those buildings. This is a 4K camera and with that high bit rate you're really seeing detail. Here's a, a take of flying just over the lake itself. Really windy um, out here, so it was battling the wind, trying to move around. Did a fairly good job. We flew near an aircraft area, which is the Toronto Island Airport. Here we are um, descending, and what we see is a lot of detail in the brick. Quick landing, that's as uh, close as we get to the concrete. So that's it for our review of the Mavic Air drone. If you like what you saw, please like, subscribe and share. Feel free to comment below, but be nice about it. We'll try to improve. Until next time, I'm Stan from Discovery Campus.